All right, so here we have a 2005 GMC Yukon. Uh, this has automatic temperature control, and the, uh, the customer complaint is that the blower motor is on all the time. Uh, take the key out, blower motor still on. They actually killed the battery with this one, had to be towed in. Um, so this is a typical repair of the blower uh, resistor module going bad. Uh, once it fails, it often leaves the circuit open. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll get to that. Uh, we're going to remove the lower uh, cover uh, so we can get to the resistor. Uh, and also the blower motor is under there too. So there's three bolts. Uh, we'll go ahead and remove those now. All right, so now we have our three bolts out. We'll go ahead and remove the lower cover. All right, so once we have our lower cover removed, this is our blower our resistor module right here. All right, so and this is our this is the blower motor. So our original resistor, our new one's going to look a little different. Our original resistor, the wires come out, they're fixed into the resistor, and they come to the blower motor. And we have our three inputs. We have a power, which is a constant 12 volts. And we have a ground, uh, which is always grounded. Then we have this pink wire in the center. This wire comes from the control head. This is the actual sense wire. Uh, that tells the module uh, from the head unit what speed to send to the, uh, to the blower motor. Uh, so we're going to do a couple things here. So this blower motor uh, is activated on by, by this purple wire uh, and then to activate the blower. If the blower requires too much power, that's seen directly right here. Uh, that's often the failure um, of the system is the blower motor demands more amperage uh, and then the blower resistor goes bad. But the blower resistor is the only thing that you see bad because the motor still works. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do some testing here to see, um, you know, to show you guys what, what kind of power draws we're talking about. So we're going to go ahead and uh, remove these two bolts here. We're going to leave everything still plugged in uh, so we can run the system. So we just twist the motor to get it out. There's a pretty good, you can see how much debris is on that fan. All right, so here we have our new resistor. Now this is the uh, latest and greatest of this. Uh, it's been redesigned several times. You can tell this has a lot more heat sink. Well, you can see the corrosion on that one. Right. right, so with our new component, we get this new connector. So it piggybacks a little bit different. So this would go to the fan, and these would go to our. So we're going to have to do some wiring uh, to make this new one uh, adapt in. But I wanted to show you this because we're going to do another uh, little test. We're going to cut the positive side here, and we're going to put our voltmeter uh, set on amperage in line. So we're actually going to see what this motor is turning amperage wise compared to the fuse. Um, you know, we can kind of see if this is what took this out. I mean, normally, judging by the age, this is original. Um, I would I would replace these both at the same time. Uh, they do work in, in together. But we'll go ahead and we'll show uh, why. I'll go ahead and cut this wire now. The fuse is out of the fuse box, so, so we don't have any power coming down this red wire. Um, so we're, we're kind of just playing with this stuff here. So just to show some amperage draws how that would be done. Um, what I wanted to say there is if you're doing a repair, when we get to that and we cut these off, uh, we want to make sure the fuse is out because as soon as we cut, we short those two out. If I mean, this is common where people just do this. Not not very good idea there. It could cause some more problems. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do our amperage test. To... All 
have someone underneath the hood. Like I said, this, uh, this system is shorted uh, internally, so as soon as we put the fuse in, the fan will move. So the fan, we have the power going through our meter, so we're going to see what kind of amperage draws. Um, so there's a 40 amp fuse, uh, so we should see at least 60-70% of that 40 amps come across and then we should kick down you know where we're in a third of that so we should see you know somewhere in the 20 amp range once we're going um, and then I'll, I'll apply a little bit of pressure and we you can watch you know what the difference is uh, so we'll go ahead and we will uh, plug it in uh, now all right so while we're settled in we're we're pulling you know 11 and a half amps you can see when we first started it up, it spiked pretty good. Go ahead and unplug it. See, so you can see when we're going to plug it in one more time, and you're going to watch this. Uh, we're, you know, we're going to get up well above half uh, amperage. So we have a 40 amp would be the peak. That would be what blows the fuse. Um, so go ahead and plug it in again. Okay. All right, so this motor is, is, is within spec. Um, I think the biggest we've seen there was maybe 22 amp draw. It is a 40 amp resistor. It's settled at, you know, 12, 13, 14 amps. Um, so this motor is not worn. It does have a little bit of a stick. It is a brushed motor. We did see a little bit of wobble. I mean, all these factors, um, you know, play in on amperage draw. But if this was pulling close to the 40 amps, it definitely would have destroyed this uh, without a doubt. Um, so we were creeping up on it. So we'll go ahead and uh, start repairing. All right, so now we have the new motor in. Just want to compare what the difference would be between, uh, so we're seeing what the motor is drawing. All right, so with our new uh, motor in, you could see what a difference. The worn one was, was they call it tip-in. Uh, the motor tip-in was at 20 amps. That was almost half of what the fuse is uh, that's protecting it. We put the new motor in. Uh, we're tipped in at 13. We dropped down right at 10 amps. Uh, the old motor dropped down to 15, 13. So you can see we lost five amps. Um, so that motor, the brushes are worn. And that is uh, burning off some amperage, some effort to get it to, uh, to start. So that over a period of time would be seen here. So these are all contributing factors. Uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, we'll start on our repair. Uh, we'll go ahead and install our uh, motor into the uh, uh, spot where it is, I guess. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put our motor in. We're just going to take this off just to get it out of our way. Okay, so we'll go ahead and install our new motor. Maybe. There you go. Okay. Just got to make sure all the clips line up all the way around. So a good shake, make sure of that. All right. So now we'll go ahead and we're going to make our repair here. So we're going to install these wires. These are going to go right here. So we have quite a bit of room since we're only plugging in here. So we'll, we'll take up about that much. All right, so I always cut, always cut one at a time. We're going to cut the ground first. Our sense wire and our 12 volt power. And right, so we're gonna solder these together. All right, so we cut one of these wires back, the bigger one, only because we're gonna try to, we stagger our repair. So we'll put this back up to this one. We'll do just about the same. 
right? So now when we bind these together, our joints will be uh, not on top of each other. So they don't have any way, uh, if they get out of the installation or whatever, you know, they, they're not going to touch or something, you know, nothing crazy will happen and they'll lay, they'll lay back in really nice. So we have some heat shrink. We're going to go ahead and slide this heat shrink. This will be the this will be the one that goes over the complete repair. So we're going to put we're going to put some over top of each one of the connections and then we're going to do one over the complete repair. So we want to slip this on and then we want to push it as far away as from the heat source as possible so that it does not uh, start shrinking on us. So now we have our smaller ones. We'll go ahead and put these on the other side for each one of our connections, as far away from the joint as possible. All right, so now we're gonna make some solder connections. So we have this fancy little alligator uh, clip machine so we have these two joints together. We're going to go ahead and solder them together. We could use butt connectors, but this is a this would be a 100% connection. So we made our connections. Now we want to uh, tighten up the heat shrink. I use the uh, soldering iron. I just kind of put it on the side. Roll it back and forth real slow. You can use a, a lighter or whatever. So this will keep the moisture out of our joint, uh, so it won't do any corrosion. Uh, so this is this would be the uh, the best way to do a wire repair. A butt connector um, isn't a very, you know, it's a connection. This is this is soldered together. So we put a third one and that one does everybody as a protector. All right, so we're, we're going to go ahead and put this in now. This, this uh, has a bunch of different uh, I guess, you know, it can fit a variety of vehicles um, in this GM truck platform style. So we're going to go ahead, we know which bolts are our, the ones that uh, we had originally or the, our options there. So we'll just kind of move it around till we, till we see what the best is. Now there is a foam pad here, so that'll fix any irre irregular, irregularities. All right, so we're going to try this hole and uh, all right, let's try this the other way. We're going to try this one and Alright, so they are a little weird how it lines up. But the foam pad is uh, we'll do our insulation, you know, and keep our and keep our uh, heat sinks inside the air box. So this looks pretty good here. We'll go ahead and uh, tighten it down until everything is kind of snug. You know, we do have a good seal all the way around. That is what's important, that our fins are inside and our seal is 
is uh, tight. That way our air box isn't blowing out. So we'll go ahead and finish tightening those up. All right. All right, so now we, our new connector is gonna plug into our controller. And then it's gonna come back to the fan. We'll go ahead and tuck our wires away. All right. So the only thing we have left is to put our cover on, but we'll go ahead and we'll test the system now. We'll go ahead and put our fuse back in. Now that we've finished all of our connections, we'll put our fuse in, uh, and then we'll test the system. All right, so we've got the power on. We got the fuse in. Now we're going to turn the system on. Oh, you didn't have to start up, but. All right, so we'll go ahead and turn our fan speed on. All right, so that is high. We're working our way down to low. All right, so it looks like we're functional. Now we're on high. We're going to have to shut the vehicle off while it's on high. All right, so our resistor and everything is working correctly. We'll go ahead and put the cover on, and we'll be finished with this job.